Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. Managing packages within Azure Synapse Spark is uh, not that complicated, but I did find a few challenges when I first tried to do it. So I wanted to just record a video that does a few of the things that you'll find in the documentation without uh, all of the caveats and things that are important to know. So do consult that documentation to, to understand more about this. But I just wanna give you a quick walkthrough of how I would manage PySpark packages within Azure Synapse. Uh, a couple of different ways that I find to be useful. And so along the way, I'll try and give you tips of like, this is what I like the best, this is how I like to do it. Um, but we'll try and keep it pretty short just to get you on your way, ready to go do the real work in your environment once you get these Python packages installed. Okay, so looking at the Python code that I want to run within my Synapse Spark pool, uh, I wanted to do something that uh, I'm still looking to see if there's better ways to do this, but uh, I really like to use PyTest for testing different functions I have. And if I have projects where I'm really doing the work in notebooks rather than packaging it all up and, and deploying it, I'd like to do some testing within my notebooks. And so probably what I'll be doing later on, uh, maybe I'll share this in a video in the future, is pulling in that notebook um, that has the real code and then running the test in its own notebook. But for now, I wanted to look at what if I wanted to use PyTest within Synapse Spark pools. So there may be some capabilities of PyTest that are available already. I'd read some people saying there were, but in the Spark 3 pools, I do not, I cannot import PyTest. And so uh, I have this dependency that I'll, sh I'll show you at break in just a second here, where I want to import PyTest. And I also want to import something called IPyTest. It's another library that's available through the Python packaging index, where we get a lot of our libraries. Anytime you do a Python pip install, you'll see it there. If you don't know what all that means, it's okay. You'll, you'll still be able to see here how we go get these libraries that we need. Um, but I wanna show you what my errors are when I go and try and import PyTest, import IPyTest, and run this simple test setup that I've got. We don't need to go too crazy with the code, but I've got a few uses of PyTest here. One is I create a fixture. The other is that um, down below, I'm going to run a cell that IPyTest, which is using PyTest, is going to do a configuration and then basically run every test function that exists within this notebook. So that's my scenario. My cluster is spinning up. It should be ready any moment. And as soon as this first piece, my very simple data frame summary, which is a little bit of error handling, once this thing's ready to go, we'll kick off our PyTest cell and we'll see the errors that will tell us that we're missing some dependencies. Okay, my Spark pool is ready. Let's take a look at the next cell. So module not found error, that's very common if you're missing a dependency. So now we have this no module named PyTest. I know I need to install PyTest. Uh, spoiler alert, I also need to install IPyTest. So I'll do both of those together. I won't make you watch this error again. Uh, and so you may have already been in this position when you found this video, cool. Either way, this is what we're trying to solve by installing packages. The first thing we'll look at is doing session packages. Now for this to work, you actually have to choose enable session packages when you are uh, setting up the Spark pool. And so my default pool where I did not select that box will not work. I'm going to go to one that is called Spark uh, Python Session. By the way, I just chose to keep the session alive in case I switch back uh, for, with this notebook to that same pool. That session will be there. Usually I kill it, by the way, to make sure I don't have extra resources running. But in this case, we might switch back in this video. Okay, so I've switched to Python session. This ses this pool is not uh, running right now. The session shouldn't exist yet. And when I go to packages in my configure session uh, pane, I can choose upload file. Here is where there's some, uh, you can go here to get to the quick documentation about installing packages using this. And we're gonna do like an environment.yaml file. Uh, if you're used to using requirements.txt, there's other ways to use that. But for session packages, environment.yaml is what it uses. So I'm gonna pick one that I have on my machine. I'll hit open, choose upload. Probably could figure that part out on your own. And I'll choose apply. And basically once I kick things off is when this should happen. Uh, in this case, I really wanna prove out all of this, almost. I have one extra thing that'll probably fail and that's cool. That'll help set us up for the next piece. So I wanna run all of this now and it's going to kick up a new session. That pool's probably not alive at all, so it's gonna take a few minutes here. While that's running though, I do wanna show you something else, which you may have been wondering, what the heck is in that YAML file? So here's my environment YAML file. The name is not important. Uh, you can pick whatever you choose there. 
For channels, I, I've just used defaults to this point. I think Python packaging index would be the default. That's what I'm used to using with, with pip. Um, it may also be using, I believe, Conda Forge is one of the options. That's 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 a possibility here. Check out the documentation about different channels if you want to know about that. But I'd just start with defaults if you're just getting started like I am. And then under dependencies, you can say that you want to use pip to install dependencies and then specify some libraries. Let's go back and take a look at our actual notebook. Okay, my session has started up. The first cells completed successfully. What happened with my PyTest code? I did not get an error about module not found. That worked fine. I ran my two tests, testing a valid case and an invalid case. They both passed, so there's not a lot of output here. And down at the bottom, this just ran as well. I get a failure because I've got another module I'm trying to use, and I did not have that in my environment file. The reason it wasn't in my environment file is because I created this thing. It's actually very simple, so it's not nothing to brag about, but I created this library, I packaged it up, and I need to install the wheel file myself. I can't just go get it from Python Packaging in Index or something else because I haven't put it up to any of those repositories. So let's go to way number two, and this is really how I do it for ongoing use cases. How would I manage packages is with workspace packages. So I do have a pre-baked setup here with Python custom. So let's go ahead and get switched over. Let me start this up so that we can confirm that this all works and I'm not lying to you. But let's go see what I've done with Python custom, which is really the important part for this video. So to start with, in the manage section, in the manage hub of Synapse, we have this area called workspace packages. Within workspace packages, I can choose to upload specific files that are libraries that either I've downloaded or I built myself. I browse to my data kickstart utils and I grabbed a wheel file that was built. Okay, if you're new to this, I'll show you really quickly how we build that in just a moment. Once I've done that, I can choose upload. I've already done this, so I won't click the button right now, but it'll add it to my list of workspace packages. This is not installed it on a Spark pool yet. The next step, once that's uploaded, is to go to my Spark pool. choose packages and here um, here I can see my allow session level packages I had it enabled even though I'm not using them in this pool I can upload a requirements file or an environment YAML file and so I've done that I've got that same file because I'm not using the session version anymore I'm now using workspace packages for all of it uh, and then I am in workspace packages I did select from workspace packages found the correct one and hit select, and then that puts that on my cluster. So once I have both of these set up, I can force the settings, which I would do if I was doing this for the first time, just to make sure. I'm basically saying, get rid of the active applications, stop them dead in their tracks, and give me a fresh one the next time I want to run. And so after I do this, if I've made some changes, I can click apply, and now I'm working with packages that are actually uh, on, the, on the pool itself, not simply a session level where I'm gonna to have to go and do that every notebook and every time I'm uh, changing up what I'm doing. So start with session level packages to, uh, to try out some different things if you like, but then use workspace packages for the long term. Okay, so after that I would apply it. In this case, I've already got it ready to go. On my Python custom pool that we were just looking at, it's going to start up the session. It's going to hopefully do what's in the environment YAML and install PyTest and iPyTest for me and this will all work again. Hopefully my tests still pass. That's why I have them to make sure I didn't break my code in those couple minutes we've been spending here. And then finally, I will be pulling from data kickstart utils module that I've created and I'll import, um, I'll import a module called PySpark utils. And from there, I'll basically just grab the log4j logger so I can then start logging to log4j, uh, which fun fact, that means once it's going to log4j, I can turn on the capability to send it to log analytics as well. And I can go do some cool stuff with log analytics, which I cover with Databricks and other videos. It's the same concept here once you get the right uh, Spark configuration set up. So while that's running, let's go take a look at how I built this code, right? So here in my Python project, I've got a setup.py. And so this is kind of the standard that I use. Obviously, replace the information with yours if you're doing this. There's really good information about how to do this out there, so I'm not going to go deep into it. But you do a setup.py. In here, notice I've got a name that data kickstart utils is what we referenced um, up above. 
I've got something that's going through and figuring out which packages exist to this piece right here. Really, it's only the one. It's only the uh, data kickstart utils package. And then the actual code that I'm going to import comes from a module called PySpark utils and it's get log for j logger. So if you didn't know already, this is how you would grab the log for j logger and then you can start using it for logger.info, logger.error. Uh, similar things to what you would do with the Python logger, except now it's going to log for j output. It's going to be something we could route to log analytics pretty easily. But wait, there's more. How do I do the build uh, once I've got setup.py? How do I generate that wheels file? So from a Python, Python environment, in this case, I have my virtual environment going, you would run Python setup.py bdist wheel is the way that I do it to generate the wheel file. There might be a few other options worth considering, but that's how I always do it. And so now it has generated that wheel file, which I can find, and you may have noticed I uploaded from here earlier, I can find in the dist folder. Now I have a wheel file that I can go upload to my workspace packages. You could use Azure CLI or PowerShell or uh, maybe some other tools to to automate this and make sure that, you know, when your DevOps pipeline runs and builds it, you upload that automatically. Uh, you could set up that kind of thing, and I'd recommend doing that for production cases. But this is how you do it manually in case you're new to building wheel files. Back to the main attraction, we have a notebook that completed successfully. So nothing too new and exciting to show. I just wanted to prove out that after we've done all that, um, this will work. It knows about both the things in my environment YAML and the custom thing that I installed via wheels. There's one piece that's probably worth noting for when you get to do this in the real world. If I go to the monitor hub and I go to my Apache Spark applications and I look closely, I will see somewhere in here, it's actually a little bit earlier for me because I'd set this up in advance, system reserved job library management. You'll find this in the documentation. You can read, uh, I think, just a little bit more about it if you want. But when you're doing a new install of libraries, whether they're Python or jar files for Scala and Java libraries, it will run this thing in the background. And you may want to go watch it, see, make sure it completes successfully. If it doesn't complete successfully, look for errors. I can't remember how easy it was to actually understand what the errors meant. But it's worth looking and seeing if it works, because if this doesn't work, then your stuff didn't get installed. And that's going to explain a lot of why you'll continue to get errors on the notebooks. Uh, you also may want to sit and wait for this thing to finish. So in monitoring, system reserved, that's the job that's actually doing installs on your on your pool. There we go. Uh, another quick note, anytime I'm showing Synapse Spark, I try to show this, is that you've got stuff running right here. If you're done for the day, I highly recommend checking this tab. Make sure you go in. Click on it and cancel if you're all done with it so that you don't keep paying money when you're not doing anything. Uh, that will cancel the applications and then your pool timeout will kick in. And so if you got a 15 minute timeout, basically once I stop this, I expect about 15 minutes later, my pool will be shut down and I'm not paying any money for uh, resources I'm not using. So these are really the only two ways I would do packages at this point. Uh, if you have a preferred way that's different, uh, feel free to send a link to it. I can throw it in the in the comments or something. But um, these are the ways I would do it these days. Whether it's uh, if it's jar files, you can do that through workspace packages. I do have a video that that shows a bit about that with a very specific use case. I talk a bit about finding the right version with Python. The main thing to remember is to go find the version that exists um, that matches your Python version, and so. So to make sure I have the right version, I want to make sure it's it's compatible with the Python version I'm using. And so I can go to my pool, click on it, and check out configuration to see what uh, runtime I'm using. I'm using the 3.1 runtime. That's going to be using Python version 3.8. You can also find in the docs a, uh, a list of all of the things that are already installed uh, on this runtime. Uh, if you're dealing with Scala and Java, I talk about this in a different video I made uh, about how to do the Kafka uh, installs from jar files, which uh, long story short, for jars, you would be using the workspace packages and uploading the jar yourself. Um, but you want to make sure in that case that you're matching the Java version and Scala version. And of course, if it's a, a some kind of Spark related package, make sure the Spark version matches the uh, 3.1 that we're working with here. So with that, you should be in good shape to go try and do this with your own packages. Leave comments if you're getting errors, and I'll do my best to follow up on those. So that's how we manage uh, Python libraries, Python packages within our Synapse Spark pools. Hopefully those different ways of, of using it are clear and that this helped along. The documentation really is good. It has a lot in it. 
And so I wanted to make a quick video to help you out, but the documentation is a place to look for just understanding which of these capabilities work together. How do I have like a private um, repository that I want to pull from some of those types of things? Hopefully this is helpful. I have a lot of other things about data engineering. Some of it's in Synapse, some is Databricks, a lot of it's Azure focused. And so subscribe to the channel if you'd want to hear more about that and drop your comments about what challenges you face. And I'll try and put some of the kind of common issues into the blog post that'll accompany this video. Thanks. I'll see you next time.